Keep in mind, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. I'm Dan, and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 39 years. Today, I'm gonna to test some seafood gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. Make this part a lot more pronounced. Open that up a bit. Let's try this. Let's put the hinge this way. These are the products I am going to test. Skins it, fish it skinner, clam shucker, lobster shears, tuna press, oyster shucker. Skins it, fish skinner. It is designed to take the skin off a of fish. Let's see how effective it is. This is a haddock fillet. It's ready to be skinned. Let's give it a go. Skin is coming off, but it's wrapping around, so I'm just gonna hold it out a bit. Hmm, it's not behaving exactly as I want it to. Oh no, it's okay. Unless you like haddock nuggets, then I guess you're okay. It's a bit of a mess. Let's try another filet. So the skins, it has two triggers. The first one is this lever that will pull this bar tight and uh, presumably catch the skin. And the second one will start the roller work. You need to press both in order to activate it. Hmm. Again, not really pretty. There may be a technique to this, but I am certainly not getting this on the first couple of tries. Let's assume you don't have an electric fish skinner. Let's see what it's like with a standard chef's knife. On a scale from one to five in terms of effectiveness, I would give this a one. It takes the skin off, but it mangles. Now I'm gonna try the left-handed oil test. This is a technique that I use to simulate what it would be like for someone who has some sort of weakness or dexterity problems, maybe arthritis in their hands. I am right-handed, I am going to put oil on my left hand and try to use this product. Now this has a bit of weight to it. It's a little slippery already. So let's see if I pull this in, squeeze, press. Okay, well that was doable, but of course it's electric. Once you have the trigger going, it's going to proceed. But look again, I've got some mangled fish parts. In terms of usability, on a one to five scale, I would give this a two. While it's called Skins It, it does take the skin off. Alternate name would be Mangle It. Let's think about a redesign. First of all, this has some weight to it, and holding it with your index finger and thumb, with the weight pulling down, this flare just isn't pronounced enough. So I would take this top flare, and I would exaggerate it. I would come around enough so that there's something to pinch and grab onto. The next thing I would suggest is make these ribs more pronounced. There's some ribs here that run along the back of the handle, and those in theory would assist your hand from not slipping. So what that would do is would add some friction and more stability in holding it. I think you're gonna mangle many fish fillets before you master this. My buy rating for the skins it on a scale of one to five is a two. It really mangles more than a skins. In my heart, I am not a mangler. Clam chucker. Its purpose in life is to open a clam. Let's test its effectiveness. Well, first of all, I gotta say that this feels rather cheaply made and uh, quite a bit wobbly, which makes me a little concerned to start with. So I'm gonna try to start this clam, not where the wedge is. I'm gonna start the clam a little bit closer to the pivot point. So let's apply some pressure. Well, it, uh, Open but broke the clam, which is kind of too bad. Let me keep going. I'm going to now get towards the wedge and see if I can wedge this open. And uh, yeah, a bit messy. Let's try a larger clam to see if it makes any difference. And I'm also gonna use the banging technique. Not that it's designed to do that. Now you can see that the wedge is going to have some effect. Actually, if I can get it down, it'll have some effect. Um, but boy, I don't think this lever is long enough. Not great. Not even good. Not loving it. 
Although this clam is large enough to take advantage of the wedge, I think the wedge needs to be re rethought. The clam itself is intact and the shells ended up intact. So a larger, stronger shell is uh, more suited to this device, but still not great. I'm gonna try the same thing by opening a clam using a clam knife. I'm gonna put on some cut resistant gloves because I have a very high sense of self-preservation. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, I would give this a two. It's a little too wobbly for my liking. Okay, it's time for the left-handed oil test. I'll push down with my left hand. Okay, so that started the split. It's not completely open. There really is not a whole lot of difference between using your left or right hand or even a slippery hand because all you're doing is applying downward pressure on this. In terms of usability, I would rate this a two. It had some success, at least it gets the clam started. This really needs to be more graceful. I would totally change the way this is designed. So first of all, I would make this part more stable. So take the wobble out of this section of it. I would also come up with a wedge shape that is simply one continuous piece, kind of like an ax. The way an ax splits wood is very similar. Another thing to consider is that smaller clams do not take advantage of the wedge. So somehow you have to get the clam and the wedge closer together. So either change the shape of the wedge so that it takes place lower or somehow make the base adjustable so that the clam itself can be raised to take advantage of that wedge. So what I may do is look at a way to raise the handle higher so that your hand is above, so that in its fully closed position, you are still elevated above the base and above the table. That does two things. It provides more leverage and it prevents your hand from smashing against the base. Happy knuckles will make you happy as a clam. In terms of a buy rating on a one to five scale, I would give the clam shucker a one and there are probably better alternatives out there. Nice try, clam shucker. Thank you. Next. Lobster, cheers. Let's snip our way through some lobster tails, shall we? So these are rather unique. They are actually designed to cut as you pull towards yourself, as opposed to a standard pair of scissors which you push away from yourself. So they've got a hook here uh, that will catch the lobster shell. As you're cutting, I'm gonna be pulling it towards me. Let's give that a try. I'm gonna hook it in, try to center it, and I'm gonna start cutting. And we should be through the lobster shell. Let's see if it wants to separate. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna try this another way. I'm gonna to try to get to the lobster tail using a pretty normal looking seafood cracker. In terms of effectiveness, I would give this a four and a half. It's almost there. I'm just seeing a couple places where the design itself can be improved. So it's time now for the left-handed oil test. Now it is slippery. And let's see how the tool behaves in that situation. Since it's only a squeezing action, I think the handle itself is a little tight, but it is cutting through the tail pretty easily. Let me just go down to the very end. And uh, that should be it. Let's see if I can get into the tail like I did before. Pull the halves apart. Really only need to pull one half apart. And let's see if I can pull the lobster meat out. And yeah, that was as successful as before. In terms of usability, I would rate this a 4.5 because I think it is very usable. I would definitely want one around my kitchen. It's almost there. I don't think it's fully, fully there. So for a redesign, there are a couple of things here that I would suggest. First of all, this finger area is a bit tight. We want to get three fingers in there and those three fingers are a bit jammed. It'd be great to get a pinky in there because the pinky actually, while you may think it's weaker, it's further from the previous point, can give you quite a bit of leverage. Remember, if you're gonna squeeze something, always include the pinky. So I think we need to come out more with that opening, which means the handle would be that much longer. Another thing I would look at is as you're squeezing this, you're applying pressure here to the thumb and you're applying a pr pressure here to the inner surface of your three fingers. And it's a little thin in that direction. So what I would do is make this thicker and maybe flare out the part that you're pushing up so that the, the pressure is reduced. 
This is what that looks like in cross-section. So what I would suggest is making that wider and a little more shallow so that you're pressing against more of a surface area. So not only will that feel better, but I think you'd be more willing to squeeze a little bit harder in doing that. My buy rating for the lobster shears is five out of five. I like it, I think it's really useful, especially if you're a lobster lover. Tuna press. Its purpose in life is to squeeze the oil or water out of a can of tuna. Let's see how effective it is. The way this is designed is there is a plate here that's gonna come down on that can of tuna. The plate has holes in it, so the liquid is going to eat, ooze through those holes. I've got a pre-opened can here of tuna and water. I'm gonna remove the lid completely, place the tuna can inside, close it up, and start squeezing. I'm gonna do this this time with two hands. And the water is coming out. And what we've got here is a almost dry can of tuna. So that worked. So I know what you're thinking. Why don't we just use the lid of the tuna can and press the water out using the lid? Let's try that. In terms of effectiveness, I would give this a one out of five. I don't think this is really any more effective than using the lid of the tuna can itself. Okay, let's do the left-handed oil test. For those of you who are wondering, yes, the skin on my hands is very soft. Let's give it a shot. Gonna need two hands to open it. I'm gonna place the can with my left hand. I'm going to close it down and squeeze. It's a little difficult to squeeze and I can feel that Actually, it's not that easy to squeeze because what you want to do is squeeze away from the hinge to get the most amount of leverage. Um, it's a little slippery, not wonderful. In terms of usability, I give it a one. It's, it's just as easy or as difficult as using the lid of the can. So I'm not sure why it exists. Okay, time to redesign. As mentioned, this doesn't give any mechanical advantage at all. And you're still pushing with one or two thumbs. Uh, which is not ideal and doesn't give you any advantage over using the lid of the can. So I would try something a bit different. Let's say we just keep the hinge there for now and come up like that. But instead of the can sitting on the base, I would design some, some feet here to raise the can off the floor. What that would let you do is actually use one of both hands, use your weight to press down on the tuna can. It's not perfect because what would happen is the water level would rise. So this would have to be tilted in some way. Let's try this. Let's put the hinge this way. That way when the plunger comes down, it is at the same angle as the can. That would allow you to put a palm press on the top of the can and the liquid would pull up here. So the can's not messy. Of course, you'd have something running down the side of the can, but you have that anyway. And I think that would be uh, a design that would give you a little more power and more mechanical advantage. Okay, for a buy rating, I would give the tuna press uh, maybe a 1.5. So it may have a little bit of merit. My advice would be tuna t buy this product. Oyster shucker. This is designed to help you more safely shuck oysters. Let's see how effective it is. So the thought here is the knife will come out. Let me use these oysters. Is meant to help you hold the oyster. Hand goes on top there, and you can use the knife to get into the oyster. Now, the manufacturer cautions, even though this looks like it's a protective, that this is not pierce protective. So because of that, and because of my heightened sense of self-preservation, I'm gonna put on some knife-resistant gloves. Best way to open oysters is pre-opened at a restaurant. Just order a dozen. But that being said, I'm gonna give this a go. Okay, let's see if I can get into this oyster at all. Oh, we do have it open. Okay, I'll cut around. And we are open. Let's try a different oyster. This one's slightly smaller. 
So yeah, in this case, I want to thank the oyster for being a little more uh, cooperative with letting me get into it. And the knife worked pretty well. But the question is, how much did this housing help? And I'm not sure it does much to steady it. But the fact that the oysters itself does not have a flat surface uh, makes it just a little more wobbly than you would want. Let's see how this compares with opening an oyster using a basic chucking knife and just a towel. In terms of effectiveness, on a scale of one to five, I would give this a two. It seems to be a bit of an overpromise. I would just use a towel. Okay, so safety first. We're not gonna do a left-handed oil test because I'm gonna keep the gloves on, but I am gonna try to use this device with my left hand. Not loving the fact that I am doing this with a little bit less control because I am right-handed. But I think we're still okay to go. Insert knife twist. Okay, we're starting to get some action here. Okay, I'm breaking the shell a little bit. Okay, don't give up. Okay, we have some success. Okay, well, what is nice about this is that it is pretty stable in your left hand. It's not a simple handle, it's not a simple shape. It is shaped with a purpose, and I think that purpose is working pretty well. So in terms of usability, I'm kind of divided on this because I think the knife is pretty well thought out and pretty easy to use. But I don't think this housing makes a whole lot of sense. Give this a three out of five. You take the good, you take the bad. What I would do to redesign this, I think what I would do is make this housing a bit more protective by adding something a little more secure in terms of being pierced along the top and maybe even here because the knife can even come up here and make sure that it's made out of a shape or a substance that is uh, protective against a knife stab but also that will conform to the top of the oyster. The other thing I would do is make some sort of bed here that's gonna to conform to the shape of the oyster. Like I said, the towel seems to work pretty well. So I would rethink the entire bottom of this and definitely rethink the bed that the oyster sits on. So as an alternative to this design, I would suggest a design that assumes you're gonna use a towel to hold the oyster and design just the top part here and be protective of possible stab wounds because who likes getting stabbed? Not I. For a buy rating, I am giving the Oyster Shucker a 2.5. I think the knife itself is really well designed. Someone can use a towel because it's more stable. Never underestimate the usefulness of a towel. The worst thing you can do as a designer is disappoint your customers. Unfortunately, for four out of five of these products, I am disappointed. Lobster shears, you're okay. When buying seafood gadgets, manage your expectations.